YTPC. Aristopolis is here. I got some uh, Boswell's Christmas cookie loaded down in the Savinelli. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about a story that uh, was inspired by something that Matches860 said in a video he just posted. He gave me a shout out and said that his story uh, was inspired by uh, one of the stories that I had told. And I'll put a link to that uh, video in his hilarious, hilarious story. But he had mentioned in this video that he had uh, been a stock clerk. And that reminded me of probably the greatest uh, practical joke that I was ever a victim of when uh, when I was a stock clerk. I think it was uh, 95, 96, somewhere in there, long time ago. I was a, a stock clerk at a Harris Teeter. And I'll always remember that job for three things. Number one, the, uh, the practical joke. And the, and the other two were both news stories that I heard on the uh, radio while I was there. Number one was uh, uh, Tommy Morrissey, the heavyweight fighter who uh, played Tommy Gunn in uh, uh, Rocky V, announced that he had the HIV virus. And he since died. I think he died a couple of years ago. But the the uh, the, uh, the second news story was uh, really tragic, but one of those things you just can't help but laugh. It uh, involved a couple of guys who had uh, tipped back a few too many on New Year's Eve, and they broke into the New York Zoo. And uh, somehow they either fell or they climbed down into the uh, tiger pit. And they rolled up on a Bengal tiger. And of course, obviously, this tiger grabs a hold of one of these guys. And the uh, second guy, who probably who has to be the best friend in the history of the universe, decided he was going to help his buddy get free by kicking the tiger in the face. Which worked out spectacularly well, because the tiger let go of the first guy and then killed the second guy. And apparently was really committed to it also because the first guy was not a, not only able to get away from the tiger, but was able to then climb out of the tiger pit. Although I'm sure he wasn't nearly as drunk when he tried to climb out as he was when he fell in. I imagine that tiger teeth probably have the same effect that uh, police lights have. When you've been drinking, you don't sober up a lot, but you... Uh, definitely a little more alert. And, uh, you know, so even though that, that story was tragic, it was just, it was just too funny to ever forget. And, um, so I'll always remember that job for, for those two things and the story I'm getting ready to tell you, which happened at the end of my shift one day. Uh, we, we, we got off at seven o'clock. This was at AM. I work third shift and we got off about seven, seven AM. And uh, I'd gotten all my stuff punched out, and I'm walking to the front of the store. Can't even. My pipe won't even stand by my side. It was a long time before I was able to tell this story. I felt so stupid. But anyway. As I'm walking down the aisle to the front of the store, one of the guys leans into the aisle and yells, Andrew, run in the back, grab me a box of fallopian tubes. Hurry up, man, got a customer waiting. Which was a great thing to say because I immediately stopped trying to to uh, picture in my mind what a fallopian tube was and just started hauling ass back to the back of the store to, uh, to try and find one. Not that I would have been able to catch on anyway. But I get back there and I immediately start digging through these pallets looking for these fallopian tubes. Now, I don't know exactly what it is I'm looking for, but I don't ask anybody because what the guy said sounded so familiar that I just figured it was only a matter of time before it came to me. I just assumed I was having a brain fart and it was going to come to me at any second. And if not, I would surely know it when I saw it. So I'm back there digging through these pallets. Nothing. 
And the whole time I'm thinking, Fallopian tube, Fallopian, God, that thing sounds familiar. I wonder if I've had them. And I'm like, I don't know, man, a fallopian tube, how could you ever forget having something like something called that? How would you ever forget that? And uh, so the search continued. It's go on and on. And eventually I end up standing back there looking at these ballots in the, uh, in the risers going, what the hell am I looking for? <laughs> it sounds so familiar. It's right, right on the tip of my tongue. What is this thing? And about that time, there was a tap on my shoulder. And I turned around, and it's a guy who had asked me to go fetch his stuff. And he says, come on. Well, he's got this sly smile on his face. And uh, as soon as I saw that, I, it came to me what it was. And uh, so, yeah, they nuked me that morning. And uh, it was a long, long time before I could tell anybody about that particular adventure. And I don't think that I've told any of the women in my life about that adventure which is a shame because that's something my mom would get a real kick out of watching matches video it was so funny and uh, thanks ever so much for sharing that story I've only heard about uh, THC pills once or twice in my life and never really heard about uh about uh, how powerful they were. So that was, uh, that was a real laugh riot to hear about that. And uh, once you uh, mentioned the stock clerk and the getting yelled at, which was something that was also common there, I, uh, I couldn't wait to tell that story. Enough time has passed that I felt I could, I could probably get into it without being too embarrassed. And I'll put a link to Match's video in the uh, cellar so you all that haven't checked it out can go check it out. Although I'm sure most of the people who have subscribed to me have subscribed to him probably already seen it by now. But who knows? Anyway, I definitely want to get on and share that with you while it was still fresh in my mind. Uh, I guess that's about it. This is Aristopolis. Keep an eternal in my burning. See ya.